Hi right, guys, it is an absolutely spectacularly gorgeous, I do mean over the top beautiful day. Here in the collapse of global industrial civilization on this gorgeous spring day in uh, spring day in late July uh, where it is is the temperature here on Tuesday July 25th it is 73 degrees 73 degrees with a light summer breeze flowing I see butterflies fluttering around and it is a gorgeous day uh, bad news we do see that Wally Cleaver is dead but uh, not here to talk about Wally Cleaver. We're here to talk. We're here to talk about doomers. And and guys, am I the only one who is noticing that the mainstream media, on like everywhere you turn now, this anti-doomer attack that doomers are under are under assault from uh, from all ends of the spectrum everybody hates a doomer uh, the lefties the uh, right wing so anyway uh it doesn't matter if you're on huff post or uh cnbc and i knew it wasn't i i can't believe it took this long although it probably just took this long for me to notice one we now have fox news fox news uh Climbing on the anti-doomer bandwagon, uh, you know, talking about those uh, those damn doomers, those clueless morons, acting like there's anything wrong on this planet, uh, when clearly, uh, according I guess according to Fox News, just everything, it is a gorgeous 73 degree sunny day. In New York with all of the flowers blooming uh, how can anybody be a doomer uh, on a beautiful day like this do you hear the uh, we have the little wind chimes tinkling in the background okay so this is Fox News then of course Yahoo News uh, surfing the biggest stories on the planet not sure where this came out in the Rolodex, maybe 20 or 30. Take it away, Fox News, and uh, give it to those doomers. Eight years? Nine years? Six years ago? A climate change activist guide to doomsday. All right, we have Fox News offering us a somewhat but i thought it was going to be tongue-in-cheek but apparently not this is fox news offering its readers a climate change activist guide to doomsday all right <clears throat> advocates of combating climate change are increasingly invoking doomsday scenarios to pressure President Biden to take unilateral action to lower greenhouse gas emissions despite a history of such claims falling flat. The rhetoric is coming not only from progressive activist, the very term progressive activist is uh, it is almost as funny as Fox News poking fun at alarmists. Progressive activists are pretty much as clueless as uh, as anybody watching Fox News. But anyway, the rhetoric is coming not only from progressive activists but also Democrats on Capitol Hill. Lawmakers, in particular, have intensified their doomsday predictions as huh, as huh, hopes for a climate change deal have waned within the Senate in recent days. 
Senator Bernie Sanders recently told his supporters that if immediate action was not taken on climate change, an immigration and public health crisis was likely to appear by 2030. Quoting Bernie Sanders, according to Fox News, quote, thousands of people are dying. You're going to see more mass migrations, more diseases for the sake of future generations, plural, future generations, plural, our kids, our grandchildren, we have got to act. Now, of course, that is implying that Bernie Sanders, uh, that uh, left-wing radical socialist Bernie Sanders is actually believing that we have generations of future, uh, of future humans. Okay, Corn, Cor Concordia University echoed a similar message when publicizing its climate clock. Launched in 2020 to give world leaders a sense of urgency, the climate clock purports to denote the amount of time humanity has left to address climate change to avoid the most dangerous consequences of global warming. At the moment, the climate clock figure stands at just under seven years. Activists say that is the time left to avert disaster by limiting global warming to one and a half degrees C. If there is any clueless moron on this planet at Concordia University, which my guess is not really a university, if there is any clueless moron on this planet suffering any delusion that uh, we have uh, seven years to keep the global uh, temperature average from going up uh, over one and a half degrees uh, Celsius from whatever arbitrary lying date they chose, I suggest you just go back over to Fox News and start getting your news from there because you are as clueless as anybody listening to Fox News. Okay, and do not forget one of uh, Fox News's and one of my favorite little lefties to barbecue, and that, of course, is AOC. In 2019, Representative uh, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez suggested that humanity would be done by 2031. Quoting her from three years ago now, millennials and people, you know, Generation Z and all these folks that will come after us are looking up and we're like, the world is going to end in 12 years if we don't address climate change. And your biggest issue is how are we going to pay for it? She said. <laughs> Critics note that the doom and gloom is nothing new. They say it is part of a long-running strategy that sees proponents of combating climate change lay out alarming predictions of a global catastrophe. All right, this is uh, Steve Malloy, who advised President Donald Trump on staffing the Environmental Protection Agency after the 2016 election, and we're going to get back to this in a minute. Quote, People have been proclaiming the end of the world since forever. All have been wrong. <laughs> they make these 
end times predictions for a variety of reasons ranging from ignorance to politics to personal aggrandizement, close quote. Yes. Some point to former Vice President Al Gore as the poster boy for the doomsday strategy. Gore has made millions and won a Nobel Prize for his climate change activism, but some of his major predictions have failed to become reality. In 2006, again, now I, I have not gone back and fact-checked uh, this uh, ridiculous story, uh, okay? Uh, I have not spent probably the 20 minutes it would cost me to go back here and, and, and point out while uh, everything they're saying it here has been taken grossly out of context and uh, misleading and blah, blah, blah. Anyway, according to, the, to Fox News, in 2006, Gore told audiences while marketing his documentary, An Inconvenient Truth, that the world, and, and again, they don't have a quote around here, that the world would reach a point of no return in 10 years, meaning 2016, if the global economy did not transition away from fossil fuels. And uh, the thing about this is that Gore was at least on the right track claiming that the planet would reach a point of no return in 2016 when actually the planet reached a point of no return. I pretty much used the, uh, the year 1970 uh, is when the planet reached a point of no return. So I'm going to give Al Gore a little bit of credit saying correctly that this planet would uh, would reach a point of no return by 2016. Uh, likewise, Gore in 2009 cited evidence suggesting that there was a 75% chance that by the year 2013, the North Pole would start becoming ice-free for a portion of the summer. Okay, we need to, I'm going to go do 20 seconds. Okay, is the North Pole ice-free for a portion of the summer? Uh, well, they're talking about this gets back to the Arctic Ocean. I want to know about the North Pole. Uh, okay, they cannot answer, they, Google does not know the difference any more than uh, Fox News uh, between the North Pole and the Arctic Ocean. Uh, anyway, I've gone on. Uh, it, it, anyway, uh, I don't. I honestly don't know if the North Pole is, is ice free or not for a portion of the summer. Because uh, I don't blame it, because it's not that easy to find out, because nobody knows the damn difference between the Arctic Ocean and the North Pole. All right, would someone like to answer the question, was Al Gore right? Uh, some experts, okay, some experts, and we're getting ready to hear from Fox News' definition of an expert. 
some experts say the reason why such, you know, doomsday predictions prove faulty even when backed up by scientific studies is because it is difficult to gauge the economic and social impact of changes in temperature and take a wild guess who they quote as an expert on doomsday scenarios. That would be Myron Ebel. Myron Ebel, the director of the Competitive Enterprise Institute's Center for Energy and Environment. And so we're going to make the quote, and then I'm going to remind you who Myron Ebel is. You hear Myron Ebel is probably, I'm taking a wild guess since they don't normally read or listen to Fox News. My guess is Myron Ebel is the number one most quoted climate change expert uh, that Fox News automatically turns to. You know, just like uh, those little lefties over at uh, CNBC will run to that clueless moron Michael Mann as their go-to climate expert. Fox News will automatically run to the expert Myron Ebel on anything climate change science. Take it away, Myron, and explain why doomers are clueless morons. Quote, it is incredibly difficult to translate temperature increases into changing weather effects using predictive models. Most of the time, the data doesn't line up or scientists assume a larger temperature increase will happen than actually does, and that skews the entire prediction, close quote. Uh, I, I won't get into the fact that uh, history has proven over and over and over again as the real-time data comes in that every climate change prediction made by climate scientists over the past 30 years is in fact worse than previously believed and uh, temperatures uh, are higher you know, these are the temperatures this summer that they were predicting would happen in 2050. Of course, they were not talking about the 73 degree, degree July 26 in upstate New York. Anyway, so who is Myron Ebel, the climate change expert that... Uh, Fox News... On a planet of 8 billion people, choose to make their expert. Okay. And I'm going over to the Competitive Enterprise Institute's own webpage where this, I am reading off of the Competitive Enterprise Institute's own website telling us who is Myron Ebel. Myron Ebel is the director of the Competitive Enterprise Institute's Center for Energy and Environment, which is one of the most effective advocates for free market environmentalism. Yes, uh, blah, blah, blah. Mr. Ebel led the Trump Presidential Transitions Agency Action Team for the Environmental Protection Agency in 2016 and January 2017. So understand that Myron Ebel as much and probably more than any other single human being was responsible for the environmental crimes uh, 
inflicted against this country and against this planet during the Trump years. Uh, like Fox News, whenever Donald Trump needed advice uh, about, you know, where to take his environmental uh, legacy, he would pick up the phone and call Myron Ebel. So when you hear Trump's environmental legacy, you can kind of say Myron Ebel's uh, environmental legacy. So again, this is CEI's own bio on Myron Ebel, my guess written directly by Myron Ebel, who is extremely proud of this record. Okay, Ebel's involvement in the Trump transition led to public protest and marches in several cities in America and Europe. Uh, Sierra Club President Michael Brune wrote that, quote, Myron Ebel is one of the single greatest threats our planet has ever faced, close quote. Business Insider commented, quote, Myron Ebel may be enemy number one to the climate change community. Rolling Stone magazine named Mr. Ebel one of six top misleaders on global warming, along with Senator James Inafay, or however you pronounce, you know, the snowball guy. Eric Pooley devotes a chapter of his book, The Climate War, to Mr. Ebel. He is also, Ebel has also been featured in a number of documentary films, including PBS Frontline's Climate of Doubt and The War on the EPA. <clears throat> Among many recognitions, Greenpeace featured Mr. Ebel and three of his CEI colleagues in their Field Guide to Climate Criminals. As a result of a BBC radio interview, seven members of the British House of Commons from all three major parties introduced a motion to censure Mr. Ebel, quote, in the strongest possible terms. Uh, you will not be surprised. He grew up on a cattle ranch uh, in eastern Oregon and uh, was a student, a graduate from the London School of Economics. So anyway, uh, this is the person Fox News chooses whenever they want to set the record straight about those climate change alarmists. Okay. Critics, you know, critics... making sure my ducks are not being attacked by some wild animal. Critics, you mean, you know, critics of doomers, say that studies trying to analyze the impact of changes in temperature rely heavily on correlations rather than causes. Doomsday predictions have only increased as climate legislation on Capitol Hill has stalled because of democratic infighting, meaning, you know, who they're talking about, that one democratic senator, that, uh, that uh, fossil fuel whore, Joe Munchkin from West Virginia, one democrat senator has sided with all of his Fox News uh, watching uh, colleagues. So, 
it makes it sound like there, you know, uh, this is just one of the many ways that Fox News misleads the clueless morons. Um, last week, 60 House Democrats echoed the message when calling on Biden to declare a national emergency on climate change. That move would allow the White House to mobilize emergency powers to lower carbon emissions. Yes, this is, so then they quote Representative Alan Lowenthal, Democrat from California, quote, if we don't really begin to lower emissions, this planet has no chance. We have a few years left. And that's it. The planet is dying. Yes. Uh, of course, we all know the problem with that statement. It makes no difference whatsoever on any level at this point. If we really begin to lower emissions, this planet has no chance. We do not have a few years left. We passed the point of no return in 1970, and the planet is pretty much dead. Okay, Democrats have also tried to capitalize on the recent heat wave besieging the East Coast. Yes, like this 73 July day. Uh, in New York as proof, as proof that climate change is getting worse and dire action is needed. Malloy, you know, that little uh, fellow henchman of Myron Ebel, M Malloy says such tactics ignore broader trends and data when it comes to the climate which is exactly uh, what they do. They, you know, ignoring uh, getting to be over a century's worth of data uh, on the climate showing that we're screwed. Quote, climate alarmists are trying to surf a heat wave to pressure Joe Biden into declaring a climate emergency. Yes, thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, Fox News, I'm looking at uh, huh. I was going to read a comment by, oh, here we go, with no thumbs up and one thumb down, a comment from a fellow named Humpty Dumpty. Take it away, Humpty Dumpty, and deserve your one thumb down and no thumbs up. <clears throat> uh, as a proud non-repentant doomer, which has made the study of this issue, and this issue has virtually nothing to do with the climate. The focus of his life for the past 15 years, I can at least enjoy the sick irony of Fox News poking fun at alarmists. By the way, the issue is called human overshoot, a term that has never been used and will never be used by either Fox News or their equally laughable lefty mouthpiece CNBC or anyone in between. And that is the, uh, what Humpty Dumpty has to say, and I'll have to agree with Humpty Dumpty, that uh, the, the very concept 
of human overshoot. Uh, it, it is nowhere. My guess is Myron Ebel has never heard the term human overshoot, which has, uh, as Humpty Dumpty said, almost nothing to do with climate change. It is 73 degrees in July 2022, okay? And the planet is dying. Well, the planet's dead. Uh, we just haven't rolled the planet over and stuck a fork in it yet. But uh, I've got to wrap this up, guys, because uh, I've got to get preparing for a uh, new culvert. Uh, I'm going to start installing a new road uh, in Bugs in a Jar Farm so uh, I can drive my gas-sucking truck up to, uh, you know, up to the tiny house uh, at the top of the hill uh, because my Airbnb guest, it's too too much for them, you know, too long for them to walk. So we're going to start ramming a new road across Bugs in a Jar Farm. Might have to take out, a, I don't know, I shouldn't have to bulldoze more than about a hundred milkweed plants. Those milkweed plants are just in the way of the damn bulldozer. But uh, I have to go buy a culvert for all of the flood water runoff while I still can. I highly suggest you get out there and start installing culverts while you still can. Bye, guys.